So My Hero Academia Chapter 417 is finally out, and with it we dive right back into the heat of battle as Midoriya not only transfers all of his quirks, but actually manages to break right into Shigaraki's core to face off against a true Shigaraki. And so without further ado, let's jump right into My Hero Academia Chapter 417 titled Shimura. This chapter opens up with Midori and Shigaraki continuing their epic clash, causing massive shockwaves knocking back and or destroying absolutely absolutely everything in the nearby area, including, and but not limited to, Meihatsume's camera, leaving all of the viewers around the world shocked and worried as the last image they see is of Midoriya flying directly into Shigaraki's cacophony of fingers. But luckily for us, we aren't relying on Hatsume's coverage, as we see Midoriya land another devastating hit on a completely inhuman looking Shigaraki, which he uses in a moment that genuinely surprised me to transfer every single one of One For All's vestiges, absolutely smashing and leaving a ginormous crater inside of All For One's core. Wait, did I say all the vestiges? Well, I meant all of the vestiges, with the exception of one. Nana Shimura, who awakens all alone, still inside of One For All's vestige world, and as she calls out into the void for her fellow wielders, she quickly realizes that she alone wasn't transferred over to Shigaraki, due to the conflicting feelings she possesses for both Tomura and her son Kotaro. With this troublesome turnabout, the story then cuts right back to where the last chapter left off, with Midoriya back in his school uniform transported to outside of the Shimura house inside of Tomura's memories. Midoriya, in seeing the house, goes to ring the doorbell before entering, but as he goes to do so, a voice calls out to him asking, what are you planning? What will actually change if you know about the past? And as Midoriya looks up, he sees standing before him is a dark and shadowy version of himself. Yet, despite this shadowy figure's appearance, Midoriya quickly comes to the assumption that this is actually Shigaraki communicating with him. So, he informs his dark self that he's not exactly sure, but he has to find out. Dark Deku then says, die, but Deku only replies with, I'm coming in. However, it is at this moment that Midoriya notices that he is currently standing in the middle of the road, and he has to quickly avoid an oncoming truck. <gasps> Midoriya nearly got hit by Truck-kun! Although he does manage to narrowly avoid getting isekai himself, Midoriya's backpack does get nicked by the truck, which actually causes it damage, revealing that Midoriya isn't just experiencing these memories as his vestige. He is now physically inhabiting this memory world. Nanashimura's vestige then appears beside Midoriya and informs him that due to him physically being there, which she isn't, it's possible for him to not only take real damage, and get hurt or worse, but he can now interact with the memories as if he was actually there himself. Nana then continues going on to apologize to Midoriya for being the only vestige that couldn't be transferred, stopping them from fully shattering all for one's core. But Midoriya tells her not to worry, and he's genuinely glad to have somebody here with him in this moment. Nana then explains that despite their inability to fully destroy Shigaraki's outer core, this realm, this memory, this vision of his origin is indeed the core of Shigaraki, and the place they have been trying so desperately to break into. So now they have their only chance to hit him and take him down for good. With this information, Midoriya doesn't hesitate in pushing forward, and as he rushes towards the front door of the house, his dark visage disappears. But it is quickly replaced by a new shadowy entity that appears above Midoriya and lands on him, piercing his arm with a blade. This new entity is then quickly revealed to be none other than Stain, who's 
actually reenacting his first encounter with Shiggy during the Hosu arc, except this time on Midoriya. Immediately after he does this, Stain's face then begins to morph and change into Redestros and Overhauls, who both ask Midoriya the same questions they ask Shigaraki during their encounters. What do you stand for? What do you want to build? Do you have a plan? In response to all of these questions, Midoriya shouts back at them, No! Now get out of my way! Before pushing the entity off him, running to and opening the front door. And as Midoriya does so, to his surprise, he doesn't see the inside of the house as expected. But instead, the photograph of Nana and little Kotaro that inspired both Tenko and his sister Hana to be heroes. In seeing this photograph, Nana herself begins to get teary-eyed. And as her and Midoriya now start to rush past the image and into the house, we start to hear the conversation Hana and Tenko had when they first discovered it. Although this happy memory of the two kids wanting to grow up and be heroes just like their grandma is quite short-lived. As upon entering the house, both Nana and Midoriya witnessed the events that took place after this memory. The event of Kotaro beating Tenko for looking at the picture and wanting to be a hero. Yeah, that's definitely a downer. Nana, in seeing the man her son became, immediately starts crying. And Midoriya, who in seeing this event take place tried to rush in and stop it, gets blocked by an invisible barrier, which is referred to as Shigaraki's rejection, meaning it's the last remaining bit of All For One protecting Shigaraki's core. With Midoriya unable to intervene, the scene plays out as it did originally, with Kotaro hitting Tenko and declaring that Tenko's grandmother is a demon who abandoned her own son. Nana, in hearing this, thinks to herself that this isn't true. She was forced to leave him behind for the greater good. However, in seeing this memory, and in seeing the man her son became, she realizes that the wound she left on Kotaro ended up hurting Shigaraki too. And she falls to the ground in despair, blaming herself for not being strong enough to defeat All For One and getting back for her son. As Nana is on the ground, Midoriya continually tries to break through the invisible barrier to save the defenseless Tenko, who by the way is completely encompassed in darkness. Kotaro then goes to raise his hand to hit Tenko once more, but as Midoriya keeps pushing on the barrier, refusing to sit idly by, a spark of one for all appears in his hand. As Nana, regaining her posture and her spirit, tries to wipe away the tears from her eyes while declaring, I'm sorry, Kotaro, for being such a weak mother. I'm sorry I never came back. And she rushes forward with Midoriya, and together they manage to push past the very last barrier of all for one, as Nana finally transfers her quirk to Shigaraki, fully shattering the outside core with one final blast. Having gotten past the barrier, Nana then grabs onto Kotaro hugging him, stopping him from hitting Tenko, as Midoriya grabs onto Tenko. As Nana begins to fade away into All For One with the memory of her son, she turns and leaves us with one final thought. It was all Grandma's fault. And so, with Nana and all of the other quirk wielders gone, Shigaraki's hardcore completely shattered, and Midoriya inside Shigi's essence, ready to save the small child he so desperately needs to, Midoriya finds himself back in his middle school uniform, in the Shimura's back garden, in the dark of night, looking on at the image of Tenko Shimura, crying his eyes out in the fur of his only friend Mon mere seconds before Tomura Shigaraki was born. Moments before, Tenko's decay quirk activated for the first time, and he took down everyone. And that's it for chapter 417. If you liked this video, don't forget to leave a like. For more content like this, subscribe to the Lunchtime Crew. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. It's lunchtime.